Okay, let me give you a little bit of theory. Usually when you have an illness, it's very important to ignore theory because theory can carry you off on the wrong course and totally blind you to what you really need to know in order to handle your illness. The stuff you really should be paying attention to is what are your symptoms and what can be done about those symptoms. What works and what doesn't work. If something should work in theory, you tend to convince yourself that it's the thing that will work. And no, if it works for you, it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, it doesn't work for you. Keep your eyes open to those facts. Um, theory even will mislead you in describing your symptoms because theory will lead you to focus on certain symptoms and ignore other symptoms. No, focus on what's happening, focus on what works. Those are the two things to pay attention to. But now, having said that, I'm going to mislead you into the land of theory. Why? Because one of the symptoms of my CFS, not necessarily everybody's CFS, was I was incredibly, how can we put this? Um, I'd have the equivalent of anxiety attacks. Now I know what a panic attack or an anxiety attack is. A panic attack, at least as I experienced it, is, goes something like this. I learned I had to avoid stressful things because they did horrible, horrible things to me. They would give me setbacks. Well, setbacks can last three to four months. You can have gotten to the point where you're able to sit up for two hours and a setback will put you back to the point where you can't sit up at all. You will have gotten to the point where you can speak two paragraphs. A setback will put you back to the point where you can't speak at all. And it'll keep you there for months, for months. So with this illness, you have to avoid setbacks. Um, stress produces setbacks. So I tried to avoid everything that could produce stress. And then I was reading, I was so desperate for something to read to keep me entertained when I couldn't, when I had to avoid stress, that I went to James Thurber dog novels. Now, James Thurber, if you haven't read him, is one of those boring authors in the history of the Western world. And boring, that should be not stressful, right? And dogs, I love dogs. I adore dogs. Dogs save my life with all that unconditional love and putting their, their tongue up your nostrils and, you know, all this kind of stuff that shows they're really interested in you. Um, so I'm reading a Thurber dog story and the first 95 pages are just fine. And then I reach page 96. And on page 96, there is a fight between two dogs. Now, a fight between two dogs, this is like two Nerf dogs. These are Thurber dogs. And there's only one paragraph. That one paragraph throws me so far back, it takes me three months to get back to where I was before I read it. That's what stress can do if your stress system is shot. Okay, now to theory. What is a stress handling system? Well, this is theory. Now, I've brought in my... Um, mentor in neurobiology, Ted Coons, who is the discoverer of what the hypothalamus does. Um, he's the guy that got me a position as a visiting scholar at the Graduate School of Education at NYU, looking into neurobiology, among other things. And he's brought over his friend, uh, one of his friends from Yale, and we've discussed this. And to them, this is a very plausible theory. Um, you've got a stress handling system. You're, you're sitting there reading the newspaper or whatever it is that you do to calm yourself down. You're doing your email. And all of a sudden, a car's muffler goes off outside. And if the noise is loud enough, it goes through you like a shot. Your, your whole body just tenses up for a minute. You usually forget it within seconds. So watch yourself very carefully and you'll see this thing happening. And sometimes if the noise is loud enough, you want to go like that to the person, whoever made it. You get really angry. Um, for the way that they've totally rocked, sh just shocked you. Well, that little bit of shock goes away within seconds because you've got a stress handling system. The stress handling system works on the basis of what's called a Sherringtonian system. In a Sherringtonian system, you have a, an exciter that pushes the needle this way. You've got an inhibitor that pushes the needle that way. Um, when that um, exhaust backfired, all of a sudden, your exciter drives the needle over into the red zone. Um, and then your inhibitor says, okay, that sounded harmless. It's not really creating any problem. It's an automobile exhaust, the value of names. And 
the inhibitor turns on and you go back up into the middle again very rapidly. But if your inhibitor is gone, then you're on the red zone all the time. And when you're on the red zone all the time, your stress system is aroused constantly. Well, you've got a bunch of stress hormones. They're called glucocorticoids. In short doses, they are energizers. In long doses, they are poisons. So you've got a system, plus your energy, your stress handling system takes a lot of energy when it's on alarm mode because it's mobilizing all of your energy to take care of a crisis. Well, it can only do that for short, amount, short amounts of time. If it's doing that all the time, no wonder you don't have the strength to speak.